Hey everyone, today we're talking about applications of quadratic equations, which basically means word problems. We're going through three types of problems. First, the projectile ones where someone is throwing a rock or a ball. Second, the fence problems where someone is building an enclosure for their chickens or something. And third, revenue problems where you're trying to maximize profit, which is probably the most useful one in real life. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe, but also share this video with your friends, teachers, parents, if you end up finding it helpful. Let's go. The first thing we need to do is understand the word problem itself. A lot of times it's useful to draw pictures to help you visualize. So we have this girl, Regina, and she's standing on top of a building 200 feet off the ground. And she decides to, for whatever reason, toss a rock upwards with an initial velocity of five feet per second. And the equation of the rock's height is modeled in this expression here. If you imagine a parabola, this is the rock's path where T stands for time and H stands for height. For example, if you plug in 30 for T, you'll get the height of the rock at 30 seconds after she throws it. Okay, I think we understand everything here, so let's now try to understand the question. At what time does the rock hit the ground? Well, logically, the rock hits the ground when the height is equal to zero, because the rock will be zero feet off the ground. Now for step three, when we set up our equation, we can plug in h equals zero and solve for t, to get the time when the height equals zero. When it comes to quadratic equations, there are a couple ways to solve it. If you're not familiar, I have another video on four ways to solve quadratic equations, but I usually go either for factoring or the quadratic formula. And just looking at this equation, there's no way I'll be able to factor this, so I'll use the quadratic formula, which I've copied down here. To solve, we'll find our a, b, and c values, then plug it into the formula. And just like magic, we have our answers. Notice we'll end up with two answers because of the plus or minus in the quadratic formula, but only one will make sense logically. This one is negative, which doesn't make sense unless you can travel back in time, so this is our final answer. Up next, we have these problems where people are building fences to enclose their gardens or animals. Let's first understand the problem. In our case, we have our girl Katie who has some pigs and sheep she needs to build a fence for. It's going to look like a rectangle with fence running down the middle to separate the animals. And she has a total of 500 yards of fence. The question is, what dimension will maximize the area? Or in other words, what is the length of each side of the fence that will give you the biggest space inside the fence? Depending on how you build your fence, you might get bigger or smaller areas. Let's now set up the equation. We're trying to figure out the area, which if you remember is just length times width. So we'll use this equation as a starting point. We don't know the length or width yet, so I'll label the width as x. Then we need to write the length in terms of x, because we can't have three variables in an equation, we won't be able to solve it. So to write it in terms of x, you can think of it like we had a total of 500 yards to start with, but we've already used up three of these for the width. So we can subtract three x's. And because we have two of these long sides, we have to divide it by two, and the other long side will have the same length. If you plug everything in, now we have the area as a function of x. And if we clean up the equation and distribute, we'll get the area equals negative 3 over 2x squared plus 250x. When we're solving, it's asking how do we maximize the area? Well, if you remember what a parabola looks like, the x-axis will represent our width and the y-axis represents our area. So you can tell that here is where the area is the biggest because the parabola is the tallest at this point, the vertex, 
which we happen to know the formula of, where the x value of the vertex is found at negative b over 2a. When we plug in our a and b values from the equation, we'll get the x value, 83.3 yards. To get the length, let's plug it back into this expression. So plugging in 83.3 for x, we get 125 yards as our length. Those are our final dimensions where we'll get the maximum area. Our last type of questions is about maximizing profits. Usually people are selling gym memberships or car washes or whatever, and they're trying to price it so that they get the most profit, which I mean, who doesn't want to maximize profit? Here we have Gretchen who's selling cookies at a bake sale. She was pretty good last year because she sold 300 cookies for $1 each, but she's getting a little greedier this year and she wants to charge more. Apparently her friend Karen ran the numbers and somehow determined that for every five cent increase, she would sell 10 less cookies. Now the question is, what price should she sell her cookies to make the most money? Obviously you can't price it too high because no one will buy $10 cookies, but if you price it too low, you'll just make the same amount of money you made last year. When we're setting up the equation, just remember that revenue, also known as the amount of money you make, equals the price times the number of cookies sold. For example, if you sell five cookies for $1, the amount of money you make or the revenue is one times five, which is $5. We'll write the formula in terms of n, where n is the number of times you increase the price. For example, if n equals 2, you're increasing the price by 2 increments, so the new price is $1.10. So going back to the formula, the price will be $1, which is your starting point, and you're thinking about increasing the price by 5 cents times n amount of times. Then for the number of cookies, you have your starting point 300, but you'll lose 10 cookies for each time you increase the price. This is our equation, which I'm just going to distribute and put it in standard form. Now, this is another maximizing question, so we need to find the vertex of this equation like we did in the last example. Let's plug in our a and b values into the vertex formula. Simplifying, we'll get n equals 5, which means that we should increase the price by 5 increments. 5 times 5 cents, which equals 25 cents. So it's basically saying that we should increase our price by 25 cents, which leaves us with a total of $1.25 per cookie, which is our final price to maximize profit. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching this video on applications of quadratic equations. If this was helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more math videos. See you in the next one.